Canon R8 is an awesome camera and today I wanted to take it outside and show you what it can do. Alright, so in today's video let's take a look at why Canon released R8 and what is it replacing. Canon need to build a ladder for people to get onto the R6. So they built an entry level camera where it would be enticing for people to switch from RP to R8 to R6. That's the idea. So let me explain. R8 is the lightest full frame camera but there is RP for a much lower price so why would people pick R8? RP is a lot of compromise because it doesn't have Canon Log 3 in the first place so anybody trying to get into professional color grading RP cannot do the job then they will always move to R8 as the next option. I think what Canon has done is they built a lattice system so they want to entice people to come from the APS-C R7, R10 into full frame. So their first option is the RP and you would pay $1,000 for RP, but it has limitations about 4K, RP cannot shoot Canon log. So obviously people would think about getting the next option, which is 400 more to get the R8. But with R8, you are sacrificing the IBIS, the smaller battery, and then people would think about okay to spend additional money to get the R6. In my opinion, Canon R8 is a very capable camera. It's a mini or baby R6 Mark II. It has all the features, same sensor, and anything that you can do or think of it from a software perspective, it has already on it. With the R8, you got limitation on the physical side of the body with no dual card slot, no IBIS, no joystick, and a crappy EVF and also a smaller battery. So if you can look past those limitations, then you can use R8 as an excellent camera because the actual sensor and the video codec available are same as R6 Mark II. So why would you pay $1,000 more for getting those options? So that's why I think R8 is a step between the RP and the R6. Eventually, they're gonna take out the EOS R lineup because moving from $14.99 for the R8 to a $17.99 for EOS R doesn't make sense to get those physical capabilities because R also has a single card slot. It doesn't have C-Log. It doesn't have the option to do 6K oversampling and all that. So the next option, obvious choice would be R6 or the R6 Mark II. I'm guessing instead of the R, they will continue the old R6. That way, if someone want to jump from 1400 to 2000, they can do that. And if they want the R6 Mark II, spend the additional 200 or 400 more to get the R6 Mark II. All right, so one of the benefit of getting the R8 is that you can use it as a B cam in your studio if you have a dedicated DC battery going in and if you don't care about recording into one card slot because you get the same sensor and the same format of video options available in the R8 as you would get in the R6 Mark II. So I would say a lot of people would take R8 for that reason. Overall my experience with Canon R8 is awesome and I would think it's a better camera for indoor because you have smaller batteries so if you are planning to shoot somewhere like a controlled environment and you have a dedicated battery that is going into the camera then it's as good as having an R6 Mark II because it shares the same sensor so you would get a studio camera for a much cheaper price or if you already have a R6 Mark II or R6 and you want to have a B cam for overhead shot or B rolls because it is a good pair for using with gimbals. So I would say Canon R8 is an awesome choice when it comes to full frame camera body for such an awesome price. So I would highly recommend considering Canon R8 as one of the option for full frame bodies because it has the latest sensor and it is on par with the R6 Mark II. So if you're not into Sony ecosystem and if you're 
a Canon user and has Canon lens, then it is a much, much better choice to consider than going up all the way to R6 Mark II. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.